Well, I'm wearing glasses, so that could only mean one thing. We're going to blow some stuff up. We're going to cover gloves today. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Guys, today we're going to be covering gloves because this is an important part of your career. You're going to be wearing gloves and different gloves are meant for different purposes. And I bet you didn't know that there's such a variety of these things. So today we're going to go ahead and set them up on a test bench utilizing my Pronk Sim Cube. Why? Because it's a digital manometer. At the same time, I've got an analog gauge hooked up to my battery powered air supply. I did a whole video when I built that. Guys, we're gonna go and we're gonna blow some stuff up. Look at this, we got a variety of different gloves. We got nitrile exam gloves for laboratories. We got nitrile exam gloves that you find in patient rooms. We've got nitrile generic brand. I really like these ones. We've got some that were dropped off by a representative. These ones here are the Icicle brand. These ones here I've used at other hospitals. Man, I really miss those. I wish they had them here at this hospital. And to top it all off, guys, we are going to go over surgeon's gloves. The best of the best gloves that money can possibly buy. These ones right here. I'll go over that in just a few minutes. So why are these gloves all so different? Well, guys, I'm glad you asked. Every single glove is designed for a purpose. And not one glove is designed to meet all the qualifications. You have some gloves, which are for laboratory, which are gonna be extremely thin because they're gonna be changing gloves throughout the whole entire day. You're gonna have some gloves, which are gonna be multi-purpose, which means they're gonna have good chemical resistance. They're going to be halfway durable. You've got some that are very, very stretchy. Not all of these have the same stretchiness. We're gonna cover that when I start inflating them. We've got some gloves that are a little bit thicker, kind of nice. And then we've got the surgeon's gloves. Guys, these ones are the bee's knees. So what is the difference between all these gloves? Well, take a look. One of the things that they all say that they are, are nitrile, or some of them are not nitrile after all. Some of them are extremely stretchy. These are gonna be your latex or your high latex blend gloves. They have a purpose too. But guys, let's start at the beginning. What makes these gloves special from one another? Well, in the beginning, you had just regular rubber gloves and your rubber was either real rubber or it was something called latex. But the problem with latex is that one third of the population seems to be allergic to a type of protein that's in the latex material. Well, that's not very good for patient care now, is it? Now latex has another major drawback Latex tends to have some problems when you start getting involved with cleaning solvents and petroleum products. So, back in the 1930s, back before World War II, the Germans came out with Buna N. And Buna is a synthetic rubber. It's nitrile. Buna N is in all sorts of products from the tubing that we like to think is rubber tubing? No, it's Buna N, it's nitrile tubing. It's in gaskets, it's in O-rings, it's in gloves. Now see, all of these gloves have a different mixture of nitrile, except for this one. Nah. So the higher the content of nitrile, the more resistant the glove is to stretching. But at the same time, the glove has got a higher tendency of tearing. So it's gonna be a more durable glove, but when it does tear, it's gonna be catastrophic. So the gloves that are extremely stretchy, they're gonna have a lower mixture of nitrile and a higher mixture of some other proteins, but they might not be durable when it comes to cleaning solvents or petroleum products. So anyway, guys, Let's go over our testing apparatus and let's go ahead and start blowing some stuff up. All right, guys. So the first thing that we should probably check and probably the most important thing is how are they 
when you wear them because you're going to be wearing these probably for some duration of time. Well, I can tell you from experience, these nitro gloves down here, which are the Quest Diagnostics brand gloves, these ones are rather thin. And I do believe that these are the thinnest out of all the gloves, but they're very stretchy. I'll give them that. So if you have to do a lot of dexterity, these ones here actually work quite well. I keep these around just because they're thin. I have a lot of sensitivity at my fingertips. They work with touch screens. Everything seems to work quite well with these. Only problem is, is they're extremely thin and that makes them not very durable. We're gonna find out in just a moment. Quest Diagnostics, they go on quite easily. They're very stretchy, but they seem to lose their shape quite easily. You see that? So, that's the Quest Diagnostics glove. Next is gonna be the Cardinal Health glove. Cardinal Health is very, very, very similar to the Quest Diagnostics. It does feel like it's a little bit thicker. You can tell that it's got a higher nitrile count because these gloves here, when they tear, they disintegrate, but it does return to its form quite easily. So in the order of thickness, I would place Quest Diagnostics at the thinnest, but they're very flexible and very sensitive. These ones here are a little less sensitive, but you can tell that they hug the fingertips quite nicely and they return to their form. These ones do disintegrate when you're using them, but these ones here are more durable than the Quest Diagnostics. So that's the Cardinal Health Box. These ones here have been my favorite for some time. Now, these ones here definitely have a higher content of nitrile because these ones here, when they break, the basic brand, when they break, they really do disintegrate. And this is a thicker glove. You can feel that it's a thicker glove. And when I'm working on some things that are gonna be oozy, or if it's a liquid that I'm not very familiar with, this might be the type of glove that I go to. Also, one of the things that I kinda of like about these is that they tend to go up the wrist. You see that? So they go up the wrist. You can see the webbing between my fingers. Uh, there's not as much dexterity with this glove but it's very durable. I don't have as much sensitivity to the fingertips because there's extra material. You can see at the ends of the fingers, I never can get them all the way down. These are all large size gloves, so they should be somewhat comparable, but you can tell that this is a more durable glove. It's just not as stretchy as the two previous ones. So that is the basic brand. Now this one I used to use at a hospital next door. I used to really love these gloves. This is the Icicle brand. And this is kind of a happy medium to all the previous gloves. It does go down the wrist quite nicely. You can see that they're very, very stretchy. See, I can get right down to my fingertips on all these. And it goes down the wrist. So this type of glove, you can see it returns almost immediately back to the shape of my hand. So that means that this is a very stretchy glove, but at the same time, it's very thick. Take a look at this. I'm actually stretching the glove, see that? And it returns. So it has some memory of its first shape and it wants to get back to that. So I have really good dexterity with this glove. It does have a little bit of material that stays at the ends of my fingertips, but this one here also works really good with touch screens. So, I have never really had a problem with uh, this type of glove. Anyway, that is a Icicle brand. It's sold by Melissa Bernier. She's right here out of Houston and uh, I'll leave her contact info down below. These are actually really good gloves. I really like them. Let's see how they do on the test bench in just a moment because man, I really wish my hospital carried these gloves. That's Icicle brand and now the bee's knees. These are surgeon's gloves. See how they come individually packed according to their size, because why not? But there are some very special features to surgeon's gloves. So not only are they packed individually, why did they do that? Well, because then you know you have a right and a left side glove. But also, these gloves here are protected from the elements. Elements like ozone 
which actually naturally oxidize and destroy the proteins in the gloves. So that's why if you ever have a set of gloves like this that are sitting around for a while, when you pull one out or two of them, they're gonna break as soon as you put them on. You pull a few of them out and then start get, getting down to them. The ones that haven't been accessing a huge amount of oxygen will be just fine. And that's all types of gloves. All types of gloves are affected by oxygen. They do have some antioxidants in their mixture of material, but still, all gloves will deteriorate as they're exposed to oxygen. So these gloves, surgeon gloves, they are individually packed. There's a right and a left side. It's actually listed on the inside of the package, what's right and what's left. I really like these gloves for when I'm working on things like surgical tables. They're extremely stretchy and they go up the arm quite a ways. And these ones almost never break. You can tell right there it's breaking because I'm, I'm horsing it. So the trick with surgeon's gloves is to find the thumb first. And the thumb is right there. Surgeons, they just, they just get it. I'm not that practiced. Now these gloves obviously are as good as it gets. They're extremely stretchy. I can get my fingertips down there. Now they're very thick gloves, okay? These ones here I use on surgical tables not only because they offer excellent protection, but these ones also are not gonna tear as easily as any of those other gloves. Although I did just break one. If I wasn't horsing it like that, I would not have a problem. So surgeon's gloves, if you can, keep a set of these in your tool bag, packed away nice and neat in a pouch or a pocket. Because if you are gonna be working on something that's got hidden surfaces that are probably gonna have some sort of bodily fluid or some unknown substance, maybe even radioactive materials. Trust me, I've been there. You don't know. Wear a set of these gloves. They're thicker, they're better. Better than all of those, but they're also more expensive. And usually you find these in your, your operating room areas. Just go ahead and snag a pack, keep them. I keep one in my uh, bag that I take to and from work uh, because you never know what situation you're gonna run into. I am medically trained for uh, self-aid buddy care and uh, first aid. So if I need to help somebody on the side of the road or something, I have a pack that I can just access really quickly and I can go to work, right? So these gloves are excellent. I keep one in my tool bag. I keep one in my bag that I take home. I do lots of stuff with these gloves. They are the best you can get. Surgeon's gloves. But that takes us to the next feature. Let's go ahead and I'm going to do two types of tests. One of them is going to be a destructive test. This is not that scientific. It doesn't matter. I have a portable air supply here. I've got a digital manometer. I've got gloves that are pre-rigged. I am going to inflate some of these gloves to a certain pressure. And then the other ones, we're just going to go until it blows. And we are going to keep track of what pressure it finally blows up at. Sound like fun? Yeah. Our first test is going to be an expansion test. We're gonna inflate it to a certain pressure. I'm not completely sure what pressure it's gonna be yet, but we're gonna figure it out. We want the glove to continue to expand, and then when it reaches a certain pressure, I'm going to disconnect it, and then we will see how much larger the glove is in its final state, because that will tell us how much memory it has going back to its original size. So remember, the higher the latex count in the glove, the more likely the glove is to stretch and return to its original size. Nitrile usually isn't that fortunate. They're very chemical resistant, but when it comes to returning to their original form, they generally stretch. All right, so let's go ahead and start this guy out. I'll tell you what, we're gonna start with the green. This is the laboratory glove, Quest Diagnostics. Let's make sure that our manometer is on zero and go. Right, we are at 43 millimeters of mercury, and this glove is just going. I don't think I'm going to get above 40, so that's that was it. 40 millimeters of mercury, and it just kept going. So that's all we're going to get out of this glove. Let's try the next one. This is going to be the basic brand. We're at 
50 millimeters of mercury, 51. And that's as much as she's going to get, 51. And that's all. It's just going to get bigger and bigger. And the next one we're going to try is the Cardinal Health brand. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up. Let's make sure our manometer is at zero. And let's go ahead and give it a shot. And it looks like 41.5 is what it got up to. And it's just going to continue to inflate from there. Let's go ahead and try the Icicle brand. We got 40.9, and then it just starts expanding immediately. All right, let's try the granddaddy of them all. Let's see that surgical glove. Now this one is a thicker glove. I expect this one to be higher. Let's go ahead and zero it out. And now we try the surgeon's glove. Now this is a thicker glove, so I expect this one to reach a higher pressure. But it didn't. It's a thicker glove, but it starts expanding at 31. 31.2 I think is what I've seen. So from here it's just going to continue expanding and expanding. No more pressure. So that's an interesting find. The fact that these gloves will start expanding and expanding based on the content of the proteins and the nitrile gloves are a higher pressure before they start expanding into oblivion. So let's go ahead and see what oblivion looks like. Let's start right out. Let's go to failure, starting with this guy right here. This is going to be the Quest Diagnostics brand. We're at zero. that the pressure is dropping which means that it has reached its limits it's just going to continue expanding until it finds a weak spot and then it's going to explode in my phone here so you guys have a scale now, that's pretty large I'd say right now it's almost the size of a basketball <laughs> and there it goes oh my gosh how exciting all right so that was the quest diagnostics it gave up the ghost Let's go on to the Cardinal Health brand. We're at zero. This one is a slightly thicker glove, so it's going to be really interesting. Now, there's a little bit of a bind right here, so don't pay any attention to the sim cube over there. But it is dropping in pressure which tells me that it's already reached its apex and it's, it's going to keep going down until it explodes. Wow, this one is definitely stretching more than the Quest Diagnostics. Look how big that thing is. Wow. Guys, look how big that is. That is way bigger than the Quest. Is it going to just keep going? I think it's just pulling material. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my God, that was the best yet. Oh my gosh, that was huge. My gosh, you guys. That was the Cardinal Health brand. Let's keep this train going. We're gonna go right with the basics. These ones are really thick gloves. I don't know. I think the nitrile content is a little bit higher than this one, which means this one here, I wouldn't expect to get that big. It's probably gonna tear and be catastrophic. That last one, the Cardinal Health, that one got absolutely enormous. Now, I do not expect this one to get as large as the last one because that last one, that was just insane. That was enormous. That was the size of almost one and a half basketballs. So the basic brand, this one here, it's a thicker glove and these ones here, when they tear, they tear really dramatically. So I expect this one to get about yay big and then for it to split and explode. Let's check it out.
Right off the bat, I can see some inconsistencies in the pour. It's thicker around the joint than the finger. The other gloves were very uniform even as they expanded, which means that concentration of material around the glove is going to be pretty consistent. You can see some variations here by the fingers. I honestly would predict that this glove wouldn't be getting much larger than this because the nature of these gloves when I'm wearing them is they fail um, and they tear rather large. That's a property of nitrile is they just disintegrate as you're wearing them. Alright. I don't expect this one to get too much larger. Oh my gosh. After that last one, I've got the jitters. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> oh, just like the last one. Oh, in dramatic fashion, it just gives up the ghost. All right, let's try the Icicle brand. Now these ones have been historically some of my favorite gloves. And let's see, these ones are extremely stretchy. So I would expect this glove here to get rather large. It's been expanding at a rather low pressure, which tells me that it's got a lot of those proteins in just like the surgical glove that allow it to expand quite a bit at a lower pressure. I think that's the one thing that I'm most surprised about. You would think a very stretchy glove would have a higher pressure, but it doesn't. So as it inflates, you can see they look very consistent on the pour around the fingers. I don't really see too many defects in the glove. It still has a pull from the material around the fingers unlike some of the other gloves. This is all in the palm. I'm at 32.6, 32.7, which means it's starting to get to the upper areas of its stretch. 33, yeah, it's getting to the top of its stretch. It's gonna pop. <laughs> yes! Wow, take a look at how big that glove is. Oh my gosh, Icicle brand, guys. That is an excellent glove. All right, now for the number one glove. Guys, it's the surgeon's glove. These ones, I expect these gloves to get very, very large. This could take a while. Let's see how big these gloves can get. This is gonna be very loud. I'm so glad I got my, my eye protection on right now. <laughs> Here we go, let's go ahead and move this back. I have a feeling this is going to take up a better share of my tabletop. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this one gives up the ghost a little bit earlier. I don't think so. We are at 28.5 millimeters of mercury and this guy is expanded. It's taken off. Now I do see some inconsistencies on the pour around the wrist area and you can definitely see the inconsistencies over here near the back of the hand. It's not consistent at all but it is an extremely thick glove, so that might be from the second or third dip, you know, to get the thickness up. It's getting to be kind of big. It gets pretty intimidating when it gets that large. I have a feeling that this one's gonna get about this large before it pops. Could be wrong, but I think this glove has plenty of stretch. Let's take a look at how big this guy really is. Look at the size of that glove. My poor air pump. I feel sorry for it right now. It's taking up the whole tabletop. Guys, I don't know if I can let this keep going. So we're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. <laughs> All right guys, you're probably wondering what am I doing blowing up balloons? Well, here's the thing. Balloons have a natural trait of expansion, contraction, and returning to their normal size, durability, and they're all different. So by testing them, it's not very scientific and it doesn't matter. It's fun. That's what this is. 
but there is a notable difference between gloves. In preference, my least favorite is easily going to be the Quest Diagnostic gloves, but that's because their use case scenario is going to be using them real quick, throwing them away to do the next test. That's how they're used. That's why they're thin. They're for maximum dexterity, minimum protection. The next is going to be the Cardinal Health Gloves. Cardinal Health Gloves, they have a lot of expansion. They're, they're pretty nice. A lot of sensitivity in the fingertips. The basic brand, they're going to be thicker gloves. They're going to handle chemical spills quite nicely. One of my favorites is going to be the Icicle brand gloves, the purple ones. And the number one gloves that I like are going to be the Surgeon's gloves. These ones here are Cardinal Health Protexus, but I've used a variety of Surgeon's gloves and they're all excellent. The problem is, is they can be rather expensive, sometimes hard to get, and they're for special case scenarios. They're intended to be on your hands for long term and to offer maximum protection. That's why there's a right and left glove. That's why they're individually packed to keep them away from the ozone and away from the oxygen. These ones are excellent gloves. The Icicle brand are excellent. The Cardinal Health are really good. I still have a place in my heart for the basic brand because of how far they come up the wrist and how thick they are. These ones are gonna be my next favorite for doing surgical tables next to the surgeon's gloves. But guys, gloves don't all serve one purpose. They have different dexterity, different stretch properties, and they have a different lifespan, whether they're meant for short term on your hands or long terms on your hands. So anyway, guys, that's my graveyard of gloves. I hope you like this video. This is an extremely long video to make. I am going to hopefully truncate this down to about 10 minutes. I don't know. We'll have to see. But guys, I hope you like this type of video. This is just for fun. It's not scientific. I hope nobody gets butt hurt over how I test stuff. It doesn't really matter. None of this matters. Guys, it's just for fun. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. Give me a like down below if you do like these kind of videos. And I will try to get to testing more consumable products that we use every day as biomeds. Thanks again for watching, guys.